Good morning, everyone, again. We greet our YouTube audience this morning. And as we prepare to minister to you the word of the Lord, this is Pastor David Port of Lansing Christian Center Church, located at 5640 South Waverly Road, Lansing, Michigan, 48911. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 27413, Lansing, Michigan, 48909. If you wish to drop us a note and let us know that you appreciate the ministry of the word and been blessed by it, we will receive it gratefully. Amen. Also, there's a prayer team that meets every first and third Friday of the month. And if you need a prayer or someone to pray with you and for you over any issue, you can call this number at noon Eastern Time, 517-646-8077. Someone will be there to take your prayer requests and give it to the prayer team, and prayer will be offered for you and with you. The word of the Lord tells us in James 5 and 16, the effective, fervent prayer, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was looking at... Uh, some Bible software that I have, Logos, and they have a lot of material, and someone asked the question, said, if God is good, why do we need to pray? That sounds like a legitimate person, but a question, but it's a question arriving from a lack of knowledge. Amen. In our prayer, we don't pray to convince God of anything. We pray in our prayer is actually, really, in all reality, our worship. The most frequent word for prayer has to do with worship, Amen. not petitioning God. And I think, you know, I have been speaking on, you know, uh, in every, evidently, really trying to lift our faith up to a higher level. Not that we bore out some of the things, as I said, shall I say, the primary thing that we have taught about prayer. There is a place for asking God. Don't ever, don't ever think that there's never a place for asking God. Because when you don't know, you need to ask. Amen. Amen. And if you don't have something, you know, in your mind, you don't have it. But God wants to bring us to a higher level. Have you ever noticed, have you really paid attention to Jesus Amen. in your reading of the scripture, in your studying of the scriptures? How many times did Jesus ask the Father for anything? How many times did he ask for anything? How many times did Jesus ask anybody for anything? We know he asked the lady at the well for some water, but that was a that was a in, that was an opportunity to to get ministry into her life and to minister to her. Amen. And so, the woman didn't she she didn't know who Jesus was, and so he was introducing himself to her, and he told her, "If you know who I was, you would ask of me, and I would give you living water." And I remember some time ago, the Lord spoke to me about reason for not asking. And I taught a series on that, why we don't ask. There's a reason why we don't ask. Amen. But God wants us to, he doesn't want us to get stuck at one place. He wants us to raise our level of faith up to heights like Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus never did anything naturally. He never did anything naturally. Amen. Everything he did was from the kingdom perspective. When people were hungry, he didn't send them to the grocery store to get his food. Those three times that, or shall I say, those two times that he fed the multitude, he asked one of the disciples, what are we going to get enough food to feed all these people? And he asked that person because he knew 
what he would do because the father had already instructed him what to do. And so Thomas said, it's, you know, there's a lad here with a little lunch, two fish and, you know, five loaves of bread. And uh, he said, bring them to me. And he said, well, what is that among so many? And Jesus took that boy's lunch and broke it in pieces and gave 12 men parts of that two fish. It could be, it, 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 there had to be small pieces. There had to be small pieces of fish. Now, the, the bread could be a little bit larger, but two fish divided between 12 men, and then those 12 men, at least 50 people fed 50 people or served 50 people or more with that little piece of fish that they had. I wish I could do a demonstration here and give 12 people a small piece of something and then tell you to distribute it. And those people, they were shocked by that. And when, they, when, the, when the people saw that, they said, this is the prophet. And they got together and said, let's make him king. Because they saw how he had fed them. <laughs> Amen. Jesus operated on the principles of the kingdom. He came to restore the kingdom back to the earth. And those 12 men were his representatives that he left to carry on the work that he started. And now he is expecting the church to do the same thing. Amen. 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 I have been, this week I've been, I've been thinking about what the scripture says in Ephesians. I'm still, I'm on my message. I'm on my message this morning. We're going to get back to Hebrews. I've been wondering, in the book of Hebrews, he says, the ministry gifts is placed is given to do something with the body or to the body. Yes. They are to equip the body so that the body can do the work of the ministry. But now when you think about that, if we're going to equip the body, then we first must be equipped. Amen. Now, if what we are giving the body, is it equipping them to do the work of the ministry? If it's not, we're not fulfilling the commission. He's not asking us to make the folk feel good. He's giving us, the, he's telling us, and he's giving us to give them something that they can work with. Something that they can share. And a lot of stuff that people are hearing is nothing that you can share. Well, you can share it, but what's the results of it? God wants us to be productive, and he wants the body. See, much of the body don't know that they have a responsibility to one another. And we come to our sittings and expect somebody to make us shout and make us feel good. But we come, to the, we come together to minister to one another. Amen. Amen. And we should have something when we come. Cut out this stuff coming to get something. Amen. Amen. Bring something. Amen. Bring some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring your own praise. Amen. Amen. Be a praiser. Amen. Everybody should praise. Amen. Everybody should worship. Amen. With, a, with a few people, we can sound like a thousand. That's right. That's right. If everybody would come full of praise. <laughs> oh, glory. Amen. Amen. You're always going to give what you have. Amen. And if you don't have nothing, that's what you're going to give. Amen. Hallelujah. I said something some time ago, and I, and I want to reiterate it. What we are in the spirit supersedes what we are in the flesh. 
What we are in the spirit is eternal. What we are in the flesh is temporary. You grow up in life, <coughs> excuse me, and you get to a certain point, and then you begin to take a downturn. You, you go so far, and then you begin to recede. You have a, when, you, when, you, when we were younger, we had such energy. But as we grow older, that energy began to decrease. We can't run as fast as we used to. Amen. You can't lift as much as you used to. Why? You're declining naturally. But spiritually, you don't ever de you don't ever suppose to decline spiritually. Progressively, we're moving to, into an all spiritual existence, where all natural things will cease to be. That we be flesh and bone bodies that are spiritual. Jesus possesses that kind of a body now as he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And people, and in this, in this, in this generation that's coming, in this age that is coming, all, all of the things that is problem with us concerning race, and I've shared this with you uh, some time ago, God is going to put to it in color. God is going to put color to an Ian. Amen? And every individual, every individual is going to have a different degree of glory. Just like the stars. It's in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul says, somebody asked, what, 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 what body do they come from when you're in, 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 the, in the resurrection? Paul said, foolish one, the seed that you sow is not the seed that's going to be. It has a body of its own. See, the resurrection is going to produce a body of its own. And everybody is going to be different. We can look around now, people look around now and have a problem, and they want to be like somebody else. But you're going to look around then, and everybody's going to be different. Just like the stars. Every star differs in glory. And humanity is going to differ in glory. Hallelujah. You remember Jesus prayed in the ears of those disciples before he was crucified according to John's writing. He said, Father, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. Give me back that glory. Now, wait a minute. Why is Jesus saying that? He is saying that for the disciples. He knew he was going to get it. But he was saying that for the disciples to give them an expectation. I'm going to go back in and get the glory that I had with the Father before the world was. And now Paul is saying, Jesus, Jesus now abides in light that no man has seen or can see. That is flesh and blood. You can't see Jesus now in his glory, in these bodies. And that's the kind of a body we're going to have. See, those bodies that we're going to have, Jesus, the body that Jesus has, functions like a spirit. And yet it's flesh and bone. You peer through walls, go through doors that's not open. Man, what a kind of, man, <laughs> wow, what kind of body. <laughs> that's the kind of body we're going to have. Because when he was raised from the dead and he appeared while the disciples were behind closed doors, they were terrified. They thought they had saw a spirit. Jesus said, wait, hold on, boys, hold on. Calm down. It's me. It's me. Handle me and see. For a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone as you see I have. I'm flesh and bone. I'm not a spirit. But my body can function like a spirit. Glory to God, we're going to have that same kind of body. 
Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yes. Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians 3. Our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait from the, for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. We're going to have a body just like he is. Amen. Amen. Now here's, what I, here's something else I want to share with us this morning. Authority and the body of Christ, the body of Christ hasn't majored in authority. Few people have. But the body, for, for the most part, can I say it like this? We, we ministers have let the body down to a great extent. We have failed the body. Because, the, see, the, the, if, if, if we are the body of Christ, and the body and the head have the same mind. Shouldn't the body in the earth be functioning like the head? But most of us in the body aren't functioning like the head. We don't even expect to do so. We haven't been taught to do so. We have, we, we have been taught to glorify certain ones. Rather than focusing upon where God was focusing, and God is focusing upon the... Now, this, this end-time church, this end-time move of the Holy Spirit is focusing upon the body. Even endeavoring to get the body in position. So that the body can do what it's supposed to be doing. Taking care, so to speak, of itself. Ministering to one another. Right. James asked the question, is any sick among you? Yeah. Listen to me. Sickness was uncommon among the church during the early church days. Amen. And James said, just in case there is, I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. If any is sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And if they have committed sin, I open the door, they shall be forgiven. For the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. How can we open the door to sickness? In a lot of ways. A lot of ways. The way we eat, what we eat. That's one of the major factors right there, what we eat. Because if you don't eat right, if you don't eat right, if you don't halfway eat right, how in the world can you be healthy? When, health is directly, when your health is directly related to your food. Amen. You can't be. And if the food you're eating isn't good, you can't be healthy. Look at some of these kids in Africa and, and places around the world where the children are starving. Why are they starving? Why are they sick? Because they don't have proper nutrition. Many doors we can open to it. Amen. Unforgiveness. Stress. Fear. Many doors. Hallelujah. Authority is a factor, not an emotional one. That is, authority is the word one speaks, not what he feels. And I remember 
I had a deep assurance that was beyond emotion when the Holy Spirit said to me, or when the Lord said to me, commission the, commission the angel to go ahead of you and make it easy for you to get home. There is nothing in this natural realm that can compare with what is in the spirit realm. Everything in this natural realm has the church of man on it. Everything. Everything in the spirit realm, and I'm talking about God's realm, has God's hand on it. Hallelujah. Everything. Now let's move on here this morning and talk a little bit more about when we're in faith. And let's go back to our springboard scripture in, in the book of Romans, chapter 10. What did that springboard scripture say? Let's read a little bit more to that. Let's read something that he said prior to coming up to that statement. Verse 14 says, How then, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Excuse me. How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? You can't call on somebody that you have not believed in. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? That's not by an organization. Sometimes, you know, in order we talk about sending missionaries out, we use this scripture to confirm that we're sending out missionaries. That's, 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 that's not confirming missionaries. Amen. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? An organization can send somebody that the Holy Spirit hasn't sent. Amen. Amen. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Glad, the gospel is good. Amen. There's nothing, one negative aspect about the gospel. Nothing negative, nothing bad about it. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Who has believed our report? So then, verse 17, our springboard scripture. So then, in other words, faith comes by hearing. You got to hear first. Amen. And you got to hear somebody other than yourself. Amen. Now, what are we talking about here is our, our reference with God, our cooperation with God. Amen. Amen. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the rhema. Amen. Hearing by the rhema of God, the word spoken by the Lord. That was a rhema word spoken to me to go to send the angels ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Now you can't duplicate that in a different situation. That rhema word fits that particular situation. Oh, but you see, sometimes we try to make, take the rhema and make it try to stamp it on everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to the book of Hebrews again. We're going to go back there and uh, start with verse 1 again. And, if, and it reads, now, what? Now faith is. We take that and run with it. Faith is now. <laughs> now faith is. 
Ah, so faith is because he's continuing his speech from chapter 10, if you, if you please. Now, faith is the... Now, listen to this first verse here. He says, faith is two things. Faith is two things. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, the faith is the substance. In other words, faith is the foundation. Faith is the structure. And this word substance is two words, hypostasio. I mean, that's, that's pretty close. It's sitting under. It's sitting under. It's a structure, a beginning. What was the beginning of this building? The foundation. That was the first thing they laid before they put up one wall, before they put up one frame. And you surely don't put up the frame before you put up the foundation. Amen? Amen. And, the first, and the foundation, the foundation has to be firm. You don't lay the foundation today and put it up a frame tomorrow. <laughs> they laid the foundation of this building and it was several days before they put up one frame. How do I know? Because I was coming down here every day. Faith is the understructure. Faith is the superstructure, if you will, if you please. Amen. And, and it's also the evidence. It's the proof of things not seen. Amen. And then he goes on to talk about some of those things that were not seen in relation to what he's talking about here. So now faith is the substance of things, Hopa, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. And then he, he hits he hits a high pinnacle here in verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed. The worlds of the ages were framed by the word of God. Amen. The worlds. How many worlds are there? A lot of worlds. A lot of worlds. And some of our wise folks, they think about now leaving the earth and going to another world. Amen. They said things get healed so bad here. You know, things are almost out of control. Russia now is uh, threatening to invade the Ukraine. They have amassed, according to the report, about 190,000 soldiers. Almost got Ukraine, the, the area that is not surrounded by Ukraine, or shall I say the area that is next to Russia, the borders, the, the part of Ukraine that is bordering Russia, they got that cut off. And there are other countries behind it. And what they are saying is, one of the things that Russia doesn't want, they don't want the Ukraine to come into NATO. Because if they come into NATO, then they're going to have the support of all of these NATO countries. And they want to try to shut in, uh, uh, Ukraine off from doing that. But what you notice, what you notice, they are threatening with fear. Yes. They're trying to frighten those people. Yes. And some of them are afraid. Yes. Amen. But I've been, I've been, I've been looking, listening to this and listening to the Holy Spirit. Oh, are they going to invade Ukraine? And I'm not just, I don't want the world, I don't want the world to tell me. I want to hear from the Father. Because I remember when we began this ministry in 1980, President Reagan was elected. And they said that every president was elected on the, on the uh, zero year because the Indians had placed a curse upon, upon the country. <coughs> Excuse me. And every president that was elected in the zero year died. We called a prayer. And we went to the YWCA. 
and we were praying. I know Sister Isabel was in part of that group. We were praying for, the, for President uh, Reagan. And during that time of prayer, I heard this president will not die. And I said to the prayer group, this president will not die. Lo and behold, they shot him. Did he die? No. Not in office. <coughs> Excuse me. They shot him. They, they so intended for him to die. They shot him with a special bullet. That bullet was supposed to explode on impact. I don't know what happened to it. But the whole Kamahanda Rio Shoko, we need to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit said he wouldn't die. I didn't say that wasn't what I heard. That wasn't what I said. That's what I heard. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Tune your ears to the Holy Spirit. That's one of the reasons why we pray. So that we can hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. <laughs> Don't treat the Holy Spirit like a, 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 a Santa Claus. He's God. Listen to me. Every thought that you think the Holy Spirit knows it. Every thought you, that comes to you that you reject, he knows it. Every thought that you embrace, he knows it. Every thought that you don't think that, 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 that you get before it gets to you, he knows it. He knows everything. Can I say this to us today? We can live in the wisdom of God. But we try to, we, we live too much in human wisdom. Human wisdom has its place. Don't, make, don't misunderstand. Human has its place. But there is a wisdom that is higher than human wisdom. And when it comes to, and when it comes to real tough issues, I want to hear what God is saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. At one time, there was no Milky Way. <laughs> Everything that you see had its beginning. And we think that we sometimes, you know, our attitude about these things is if they always existed. At one time, there was no earth. At one time, there was no dirt. At one time, there were no trees. At one time, there was no such thing as wind as we know it. All of these things that you see, came from something that was not in existence. Let's read it. We understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Dirt wasn't made out of something that was already in existence. Rocks weren't made out of something that was already in existence. God couldn't take something, some certain type of material and produce a rock from it. God thought it and spoke it and there it is. When the scripture says God formed man from the dust of the earth, do you think God was down on his knees packing dirt together, shaping it? God thought it, 
There he is. And he had all the components of his body down to his spleen to the tiniest nerve cell that was to the last and the first strain of hair on his head that was because before he, he, before he put hair on his head he counted them God has numbered the hairs of your head amen and one person says he know which one is the first one that grew Oh, glory to Jesus. Now, I, I love this. I love this. But I think we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So that things which are made were not, things which, which we see were not made of things which are visible. By faith, he goes on, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice. And as I said last Sunday, excuse me, it wasn't something wrong with the sacrifice that Cain brought. He brought a sacrifice that, doesn't, that didn't deal with his sin problem. He didn't deal with his sin problems. He brought the fruit of the ground. But you see, when you come to God, you got to have some covering. you got to have something to cover you. And come on now, saints, come on. Jesus has washed us in his own blood. And when we come, when we come to the Father, we got to come by the way of the blood. And John says, if we see it and confess them, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So when we come to the Father, see, we always come through Jesus. Amen. Every prayer, every prayer, every thanksgiving is offered. Every sacrifice, and our sacrifices are sacrifices of praise. Yes. By him, let us offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, because Jesus is the one that takes those sacrifices of praise and presents them to the Father. And whatever they are lacking, Jesus makes it complete. Hallelujah. He is the high priest. Amen. Oh, glory to Jesus. Let's go down to verse 6 and 6. Look at this. It said, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder. <laughs> A lot of times, a lot of times when people are praying, they're not really praying in faith, they're praying in hope. They aren't sure. But you see, he says here, he must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, I know I've skipped over a few verses, Amen, because, but because I went through them last Sunday. But now let's take a look at Noah. Now, what I want us to understand is, well, the entire Bible, the Bible is a record of God's dealing with people who lived before us. Amen. And they were obedient to God in the things that God had purposed for them. Now, God may not be, God is not asking us to build an ark. These are examples, these are examples that we, uh, that we can, that, that, that lets us know that when we are in obedience to what God say, we get God's results. And so we must be active in the affairs of God as they were. Not going about our own business and doing our own thing. Says here, by faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. 
This was not Moses. This was a, this was a, this was a Noah's idea. Noah had no idea it was going to rain. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came, and Noah had never seen rain. It didn't rain during Noah's time. It was no need for it. The earth was, so to speak, under something like a canopy. It, 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 you know, it, it watered itself. Amen. That, in other words, it was a paradise. The animals weren't wild. They weren't wild. They weren't, you know, domesticated. Some of them were domesticated, but they weren't vicious. They didn't devour one another. Noah was not a steak eater. Noah never had a steak in his life until after the flood. He ate the vegetation. He ate fruit and vegetables. The animals, man and animals ate the same thing. Because when Noah stocked food on the boat, he got food that he and the animals was going to eat. They were all eating the same kind of food. They didn't eat meat until after the flood, until after that canopy was destroyed. And now you got rain. Not only that, you, 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 the weather condition has been changing and getting worse ever since. We got storms no more vicious now. more frequent. They talk about them increasing. But they don't address the issue as to why they are increasing. They want to say it's the pollution that's in the air and it may have something to do with it. But what about the sin problem? Now leave that alone. <laughs> But what I want us to see is that these, this, this, this great faith chapter here, it's not people's, this is not their idea. It's not what, Noah didn't say, I'm going to believe God to build an ark. No, God told no, no, it's going to rain. In the end of all flesh has come before me. Noah was the only righteous man on the earth. He was a <laughs> Wow, I didn't know that. He was the only righteous man on the earth. And I used to preach. <laughs> Lord, thank you for your mercy. I used to preach. That ark was big enough to take all the people on the earth. That ark was not big enough to take everybody on the earth. God didn't intend for everybody on the earth to go into that ark. He didn't intend for nobody to go into that ark but Noah and the animals that he collected. Because if they had gone on to that ark, they would have taken their sins over with them. So God started a new generation with a righteous man. Just like he started the earth in the beginning with Adam, with a righteous man. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Stand on your feet. And he is moving us into an all spiritual existence where it's going to begin with again with a righteous generation. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you got anything out of this or not. But listen, let's, let's find out. Let's get with God's idea. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor.